Hi class, welcome to Advantage. I'm Matt Fisher, I'm your accounting instructor. In the previous videos, we went over the cost flows of a manufacturing plant. So we saw how cost went from raw materials, made their way into work in process where we had materials, labor, and overhead, then made their way into finished goods and cost of goods sold once they were sold. In this process, we looked at this overhead account and we saw how actual costs come in. And then we mentioned in that video that they come out on an allocated basis. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna look at that allocated basis and how we do that. So first of all, we need to calculate something called a predetermined overhead rate. This rate is used for that allocation purpose. All right, so let me write down the formula for a pre determined overhead rate. It is estimated overhead. So it's a dollar amount, estimated overhead divided by an estimated activity base. Some sort of activity that we're using in order to calculate this rate, okay? If you're doing this for homework, that these numbers need to be given to you, or it needs to have enough information so that you can calculate or get these numbers, all right? You wouldn't just know these numbers off, off the bat, right? So let's assume for our example that the estimated overhead costs are $500,000 for this time period. Now these costs would be based off of information from the past, right? We're trying to estimate the cost for the coming year. So we'd probably go to the past look at the cost, see if we anticipate any changes, and then make those updates, and then calculate what that estimated cost would be. That's how a business would really do this. Then we'll divide it by some sort of activity. We think that these overhead costs are being driven by direct labor hours. So we're gonna divide this by the estimated direct labor hours for that time period. And in our example, that's gonna be 10,000 direct labor hours. So now we take the 500,000, divide it by 10,000, and we get a rate of $50 per direct labor hour. Now we've got our rate. So every time that we have an hour of direct labor, we're gonna take $50 out of overhead and put it into work in process. So let's say in this job that we're doing right now that we have 600 direct labor hours. So we would take 600 direct labor hours times this rate that we just calculated, $50, and that would get us $30,000. So that would be the amount that would transfer out and transfer in to work in process, okay? You might need to look at this a few times and really think about what we're doing here. What we're trying to do is take costs out of overhead and move them into work in process. So this is an inventory account. So this is increasing the asset. As we're working on our product, remember, we're adding materials, we're adding the labor costs, the direct materials, direct labor, and now this is how we add the overhead costs through this predetermined overhead rate. In our example, 600 direct labor hours times the rate. Now we're gonna look at the overhead account at the end of the year. In this example, the actual overhead costs are 500,000 and the amount that we allocated into work in process, I don't have that picture, but the amount we allocated to work in process was $502,000. At the end of the year, this overhead account doesn't go in any financial statement. So it, it can't have a balance. It has to be zeroed out. So you can see in this example that we over allocated, we over applied or over allocated by $2,000 because it's higher on the credit side by $2,000. So there are different options we have in order to clear this out or to zero this account out. Probably the most popular one is just to close it out to, can you guys think of it? 
to cost of goods sold. Because remember, in our process, work in process goes to finished goods and then eventually goes to cost of goods sold. So most of this over allocated overhead has already gone through the process and has been expensed through cost of goods sold. So most of this cost has, in this case, uh, made our cost of goods sold too high. So what we're going to do to close this out is debit the overhead account, I'm abbreviating, $2,000, because putting a $2,000 here was zeroed out, and then crediting cost of goods sold, $2,000. And now we would be done because the overhead account is now closed and we just reduced the cost of goods sold by $2,000. Some accountants prefer to allocate this between work in process, finished goods, and cost of goods sold. That's acceptable also, and that's probably a little bit more accurate. But if the amount isn't too material like this, $2,000, probably most of it would just be in cost of goods sold anyway. But if you wanted to, you could take a percentage and put some in cost of goods sold, uh, put some in finished goods, and put some in work in process. Now, let's assume that our overhead was actually 499,000 allocated out. So we actually allocated into work in process 499,000. So in this case, we have under allocated or under applied our overhead. So now what happens is if we're going to close this out to cost of goods sold, we're going to have to debit cost of goods sold $1,000 and credit overhead $1,000. So this credit to overhead would put $1,000 in here. So now this account would now be zero. And since we under allocated, we'd now be increasing our cost of goods sold by $1,000. Okay class, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you in future videos.